Hey guys, we're back with uh, the House and Fire Morgana. Ah, I forgot to go title screen. <laughs> anyway, we're here with Jacopo's flashback sequence thing. Yeah, let's get on with it. That said, it's simply becoming the Lord. Did it mean everything bad had fallen neatly into place? Like, he, he like, started a revolution because some lady was like, hey, pretend to be my son. He was like, oh, okay, sure. Anyway. Many of the local noble families accused me of acquiring my rank illegitimately. They walked, they waited, things bared, for me to slip up. They even tried to set me up on more than one occasion. I couldn't trust anyone. On top of that, if I took too long making the improvements I had promised the people, they would start saying I was as much of a tyrant as the previous lord. There's only so much I could do at once, though, especially with my hands so full fending off the vulture's nobles. Exhaustion soon began to set in. This wasn't the world I was looking for, the one I wanted to show Morgana. I think there's more blood now. Kinda looks like riding there. Nah. That kinda looks like an eye and that kinda looks like something too. It was day after draining day of betrayal, constantly having to look over my shoulder, fighting to meet unrealistic expectations, I was starting to lose sight of who I was as a person. I couldn't let anyone see me looking weak. They'd see it as an opportunity to take advantage of me, to manipulate me, to eliminate me. I needed the power to protect myself from those people. Attending rank was only the first step. I needed even more power. Enough to ensure no one would, even, would ever be giving me orders, could ever play me for a fool. I turned my attention first to bolstering the economy. I provided subsidies for merchants in the city, expanded trade routes, made it known that peop the people of any skin color, even those not welcome in other territories, were welcome in my land, trying to bring some vitality to the city. The previous lord had evidently loved to throw parties, squandering away nearly all the tax money on his own entertainment. If he had left me more to work with, I would have used it to clean up and repair the slums. But for the time being, th that had to remain another item on the checklist. I needed more money flowing through the city as a whole before I could make any headway in fixing up the poorer areas. Helping the people who needed it most quickly became a secondary objective. And I pretty had a good, good idea what my former accomplices still in the slums were saying about me. He used us. Frankly, hear them squeak, whispering. Some of them even started publicly slandering me in an attempt to undermine my authority, claiming I wasn't suited to be in a position of power because I'd spent most of my life in the slums. It wasn't long before they convinced the people I was just another tyrant. I just had hoped that they, if no one else, would have sympathized with my position, realized that I had every intention of helping them, and that I simply didn't have the resources for it yet. But no one saw what I was doing. No one believed me, even when I tried to explain. In one case, I invited an old companion to my manor to discuss matters, but the meeting only turned into, an into an attempt on my life. Having absolutely no one I could trust, no one I could call an ally, hit me a lot harder than I had expected, Twisted to my worldview beyond recognition. I had no need for sympathy. I couldn't show I care for anyone, otherwise someone would in in inevitably use it against me, old friends and strangers alike. In fact, those who knew me best, those who were aware of where I had come from, what I had been before, were the ones who fought the hardest to tear me down. Rules needed to be created. Punishments established. I couldn't allow anyone to take this power from me. Anyone who so much as suggested I had come from the slums, anyone who dared disrespect me, had to be eliminated. All threats exterminated before they could reach me. Somewhere along the way, I lost sight of my original dream. Lost all my desire to do right by the people I cared about. Heck, I didn't even have anyone to do right by anymore. Why did I need to climb to the top of the ladder? So no one could kill me. Why did I want money? So no one could mock me. Why did I want power? So no one could oppose me. Four years passed. And I found myself in a very, very distant place. Miracle blood? Sounds like a sham to me. Oh, it's Yukimasa. You never know. They say the sound of her first cry brought rain to the land where she was born, saving the whole village from drought. The Sayer blood has the power to cure any disease. One day, a curious rumor came to my attention. The kind of whispering I wouldn't usually put much stock into. It was said that there's a witch living in a cottage by the lake. Few had ever seen her face, but the claim she had the same voice as a girl who was supposedly performed miracles several years earlier in a faraway village. The people love their stories of heroes and miracles. And if I could have shown some support for the churches, maybe people would stop complaining I was focusing too much on the economy. So I devised a plot to capture the witch and make use of her miracle blood. And establish a new church, ever run by the nun in the city that has been fawning over. The city has been fawning over for some time. They called her the Saintis. There, I'd take the witch's blood and call it miracle medicine, distributing it in exchange for tithes, which the people would certainly come in for droves. 
come for in droves. But the blood somehow did happen to have a special powers, and that would make the scheme that much more effective. I'll worry about the veracity of the rumors later. Right now, all I want for you is to capture her and bring her to me. I was too busy to handle capturing the witch myself, so I wanted to found someone to handle it for me. There was a former slave who had, several years back, massacred an entire carriage of slaves, the slave traders transporting them. Obviously not an upstanding citizen, but there's little doubt he would have any trouble apprehending a single witch. The biggest reason I chose him, though, was because he was in enamored with the nun. I honestly thought it was rather hilarious, a murderer falling in love with a nun. I've been expecting the man to object, but he agreed almost without hesitation. There's a mansion on the outskirts of the city, which the previous lord had built for himself and gotten unused since his death. As there I decided to keep the witch, as there I decided to establish the church. Okay, so it's pre- The mansion used to be a mansion, then got turned into a church, then got- That's why the chapel's- there. okay. It's just- Michelle was like, yo, that's kinda weird, isn't it? Earlier, so... But I guess that's that? Nothing special about the widow's boat? No secrets? No? We don't know yet. They could trick us. <laughs> the nun would have ample space there to provide temporary shelter to the sick and needy. Needy. I thought, with what little remained of my conscience, that I was doing the right thing. If one witch, probably an old woman at that, was all that Castro accomplished such good, and a worthy sacrifice it was. And then it turned out to be Morgana. In an ideal world, it wouldn't matter young or old. A human being was an unacceptable price for anything. But this was far from an ideal world. So I decided that taking what little remained of this woman's life was the best, no, the only acceptable course of action. She'd probably despise me for it, but I'd gladly accept her hatred in exchange for the benefits her blood would bring the city. It's our responsibility to offer a helping hand, to the sick and the poor, to pray for the abandoned souls. Morgana's words from years back popped into my head. I believe that, as aggressive, self-centered, and utterly lacking in compassion as my methods may have been, I was following that mantra. Mantra. No, it's mantra. I don't know. I was offering a helping hand to people who needed it, in the only way I knew how. I wasn't so dense as to think she would approve of me making an older woman pay the price for my charity, though. Doing this made me no better than a thug. But everything had a price. For every extravagant feast held, a dozen people go the night without food. It's simply the way of the world. I was no god. I was no saint. I had blood on my hands. I was a villain. I knew no way to accomplish good without doing bad. After the swordsman departed, I took some time to myself. Filled a goblet with water, smelled it, and gave a bit of it to my pet dog before gulping down the rest of it. Are you still out here there somewhere? Oh, he has a dog! It's like... What was the dog's name? I don't remember. But in door three, I remember Jacopo had a dog. Him and Maria. <laughs> Are you still out there somewhere, Morgana? Well, what do you think of me? If you saw what I had become. Is the dog reincarnated too? Several days later than originally planned, the swordsman finally arrived at the mansion. I had chosen the observation tower on the grounds for the witch's prison, and I was there that I waited for him. He showed up with a burlap sack swung over his head, setting it down on the ground and saying, There's your witch. I could only hear muffled grunting from inside the sack, but it didn't sound like an old woman inside. The man's clothes in the bag both reeked of blood. Tell me you didn't harm her, dog. I smell blood. You only instructed me not to kill her. Mistakes were made, limbs were lost. Cleaned up all the blood I got on me. No one suspected anything. That you are able to immediately recognize it as the smell of blood says quite a bit, Lord. You have killed before, haven't you? Enough yapping. She is alive, yes? Of course. Felt a tinge of guilt for the woman, but it didn't last long. Her role in my scheme and the fate that awaited her was the same regardless of the condition she arrived in. Cast my gaze from the man to the, to the bag. He crashed down to untie it, revealing a young girl with one arm severed. As soon as I saw her, I knew exactly who the girl was. But why? What was she doing in the bag? Why was she the lakeside witch? What was she doing here? Why was she so pale and shaking? Why did why had I ordered her, her captured? How could I have done that? How could I have let this happen to her? Morgana. My voice was hoarse and rattling. Oh. Have I heard this before? I don't recognize it. She looked up at me, her face just as disfigured and hideous as it, had, as it had been four years before. My mind flashed back to her birthday, the one I had considered offering to take her as my lifetime partner, her face hadn't healed up in four years' time. Is that you? Her question yanked me out of my memories. You... you remember me? Did Morgana remember me? Three years we had spent together. What kind of person I had been? 
The boy would refuse to give give up putting ointment on her face. Those horrible, unromantic encounters at the graveyard. Her taking shots at me, me taking shots at her. All that time we had shared. How could I ever forget? Organa, she remembered me? How can I ever forget all the pain and humiliation you put me through? So she thinks she's, he's the, the lord from before. How could I ever forget the blood sabbats you so love to hold? What? What was she talking about? Haven't had enough, have you? Leaving scars in every inch of my body wasn't enough for you? You haven't had your fill of my blood? No, that wasn't me. I... I was the one who tried to heal those wounds. You're the man who bound me, cut me up, called me a witch, then tried to kill me. I haven't forgotten you for even a moment. No, Morgana. I was the man who, res who rescued you from him. I don't care how much my father preaches forgiveness. That's the one thing you'll never get from me. I despise you with all my soul. I revile you with every fiber of my being. For every scar you gave me, I gave you a lifetime of hatred. No, Morgana. I was not aware you knew the witch lord. His voice made my blood run cold. I didn't just know him. Morgana was... This man, the lord. He destroyed me, mind and body. Now that was another man. He was already dead. I had just taken his place. I had come from the slums. I'd been part of the slaves' revolt. I knew I had to tell her. He ruined my life. But between the sting of Morgana's accusation, accusations, I need to protect my current position. I couldn't muster the strength to do it. I wonder if, uh, present time Morgana, like which Morgana, knows that ya Jacopo was Jacopo, not Jean-Francois or whatever. Not sure. Maybe. Possibly. Probably not. Or which is om omnipotent? So I wonder if I I wasn't legitimate royalty. That I came from the slums. That everything I worked so hard to build up. To build up for who though? To come crumbling down. So like... It says that he tried to like hide the fact that he came from the slums. But like... Wouldn't a lot of people know that? Because like... You know they used him as a figurehead for the revolution. So, eh, I mean, depends. Like, maybe it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm the real lord. By the way, as raised in like, you know, pretty good hope. By the way, you don't know me in the slums. That's someone else. Do I really think it hasn't already? All I left was my power, my rank. Is that what I actually wanted? I couldn't afford to lose that too. When did I? When did I first start straying from that from the path? Yes, I know her, or I knew her years ago. I see. What do you want to do then, Lord? You look sick. This doesn't change anything. We'll lock the witch up and proceed as planned. Well, right, when Morgana told the story, it's the same Lord both times. So she doesn't know. Okay, right. Probably, unless she meant it. Unless she told us that story to trick us. But. You know. I don't know. I mean, I could see Morgana doing that. Why? Why couldn't I tell her the truth? How? How could I keep her imprisoned? What? What did I want in power for in the first place? Would anyone ever believe me? If I said this wasn't how I wanted things to turn out? I showed this earlier, right? There's blood on it. I get it. Would anyone ever believe me? Before me floats a man, twisted and writhing in pain. Although, whether what I'm looking at, at could be said to resemble a human is a difficult question. It's a hazy, indistinct shape. On the precipice. How do you say that one? Precipice. 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 I'm being consumed by darkness everlasting. I know very well what I'm looking at. The moments before man soul shatters. Come on, you never hear someone say that one. You only read that one. Did I do the same thing to him that Morgana did to me? Was it I who summoned the darkness? Who laid his past bare? Who forced him to relive those events? To experience what's more everything he felt, everything he thought? Who put him through the dis that despair a second time? I can only imagine how he must have felt, causing someone who once cared for so much pain. Things he did are abhorrent, abhor abhorrent, more than deserving of reproach. It would undoubtedly be easier for him to simply vanish into the eternal abyss. But I can't allow that to happen. 
He still has work to do. His story is essential. It's almost certain Morgana still doesn't know who he really is. He needs to face her. To reveal the truth with his own words. That's the only way we're going to get her to have a change of heart. It's not all he has to say to her either. So I must bring him back. Pull him out of the darkness. I grab the man by the arm and begin scouring the blackness for an exit. After some time, I see a speck of glistening. I see a speck glistening high above. So I make my way upward. Back into the harsh light of the real world. We made it! We're free! <laughs> and we're done with Flash Rex forever, right guys? Right? The darkness parts. We re-emerge re in the dining hall. This is... Is this Hex or the house in front of Morgana? I forget the opening. Or is this everyone's crying? Hold on. This is Hex. This is Hex, I think. Don't quote me on that. The man is still straddling me, dagger held above his head, just as he had been before I trek into his past. His eyes are wide open, and his hand is trembling. A few moments later, his fingers go slack. Blood slips from his grasp, piercing the wood floor by my face. Hey, what was that? So did they see it too? I swear I saw some kind of black cloud or something. Okay, they didn't see it too. What happened to you two? Neither of you saw any of that? Saw what? If you didn't see anything, then don't worry about it. The necklace. That must have been the key to unlocking his memories. Like when I touched them here in the mansion. No idea why certain objects show me different memories. But I got what I needed, I think. Fairly certain the white-haired girl is Morgana now. The things Jacopo did to her and felt for her behind the third door. I have much in common with him and Morgana in this in this life. Then what about door one and door two? Okay, let's think about the relationships. In door one with Mel? And in real time. It's kind of... Eh, it was kind of surface level, I guess you could say. Like, they... Like, you know, Morgana's time, they walked around the lake. Mel was like, yo. She kind of started to like him. I guess that's kind of the opposite of what happened in door one. Well, eh. Maybe not even the opposite. Door two, though. Confused about Yukimasa. I'm not sure on that one. Why did you dig that out? How the heck did you do that? Why did you show me my former self? Why did you make me watch that? Why didn't you tell her? Had he only opened your mouth and told Morgana the truth? Told her you weren't the previous lord? Told her who you really were? <sighs> it's going to turn out differently. Turn out differently how? Knowing would have only worsened her pain. Yes, you're exactly right. The man who once saved your life is now the source of all of her misery. How would knowing that do anything but cause her even more despair? The least you could have done then was let her go free. In order to put money into setting up the church here, her arm had been cut off. There's no turning back. You can't go back from that. You could have, yes. You could have stopped then and there. I don't think you know anything. You couldn't possibly comprehend the weight on my shoulders, you dirty peasant. You're right, I can't. I'll be danged if I want to. To heck with understanding the feelings of a man who could so easily lose sight of what mattered most for a little power. Yeah. Money, power, that's not what you really wanted to hold dear. So why couldn't you let go of that? Why do you have to go and go and let what mattered most slip through your fingers? Had he done anything, wouldn't have come to this. I'm like, they're, they're just like, y'all, what is going on? <laughs> I couldn't have people knowing where I came from. I needed... Wealth, rank? Oh, you didn't need any of that. <sighs> Do you have any idea how much Morgana treasured her time with you and Maria? You know how much, how, to, how she described that period? It's one of the brightest chapters of her life. Those three years she spent at the brothel, until it was attacked, she said, that, she said that was where she was able to find joy in life. Enough. She would never say any of that. Why do you refuse to believe me? She... 
She never opened up to anybody. It's all just your fantasy. What you want to see in her. You're trying to convince me of something that was never there. No, I think he's right, Lord. I believe, I believe she did feel that way. The day I killed that carriage full of slaves four years ago. This girl you're talking about, she was there. What? I can't. And she said this to me before I began my massacre. I'm sad because I didn't get the chance to show my gratitude to people very dear to me. She was crying as she did. So that was who she was talking about. It was you. There's no way. What exactly did the brothel attack four years take place? It was the winter. I see. Winter four years ago is when I met the girl too. That, that reminds me. She mentioned something unpleasant happening to her four years ago during one of our conversations. This is the, uh, <laughs> this reminds me of the, uh, in Fate Stay Night, Shiro jumping over, like, the, uh, the bar. <laughs> Everyone was there and saw that. <laughs> it's not really the same. It reminds me of it. That's just forced to part ways with the people who taught her that humans are capable of kindness. She's talking about you. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh, there's still time. You can still set Morgana free. You can still reveal your true self to her. She was likely in shock that day, not seeing you or thinking straight. She still thinks you're someone else. Hearing you were the Lord, set something off inside her, preventing her from seeing who you really were. Her time in the previous Lord's captivity left scars even deeper than she knew, so that all it took was that one word. And, and in her eyes, you became him. Which isn't to say you haven't caused her much pain yourself, but I still believe your truth is the key to allaying your hatred. It will change your perception of the world, I'm certain of it. Morgana has to know that Jacopo is Jacopo. Because then why would you want to be the white haired girl in Door 3? Under Michelle's interpretation. She just kind of learned after her death. So please, release Morgana and spell your heart for her. I was planning to end it all with the Harvest Festival. What? I was already planning to set her free then. I knew dang well it was much too little, much too late, but I needed an excuse to face her. Some occasion to give me that last nudge. So I told myself, that's going to be the day, that's when I'm going to do it. But you had to show up out of nowhere, digging up my past. Throwing all my planes out the window. You still think I'm the reason your, your carefully laid planes fell apart? I'll let her go during the Harvest Festival. Tomorrow she goes free. Tomorrow's too late. What difference does it make? When the bell tolls noon on the day of the Harvest Festival, Morgana dies. I've had more than enough of your so-called prophecies. I'm done. Look, we just had a flashback together. Can you not believe magic is real? Come on, battler. Why do you still refuse to believe me? I'm not making anything up. I'm from the future. I know how this ends. Having an occasion and a plan can certainly make it easier to take action. We can't just wait for the right occasion for everything. Sometimes, if you don't act on something as soon as you decided to do it, you'll miss your chance. In your next life, you make the same mistakes. You lock someone up that you care about, eventually causing you to break down entirely. Oh yeah! That happened! Like, I, I somehow didn't piece that together until just now. You're so fixated on waiting for the right occasion, completely destroy any chance of salvaging anything. Right, the uh, real, real, real convention. <laughs> but it was like one day, the day changed by one. You're set on release, girl, then release her. Jacopo! Stop being so dang fixated on your occasions already. Enough. Dang you. You're right. You don't have to tell me I'm being a fool. I'll do it. Right now, I'll do it. I'll release her. We're doing it? Thank you for making up your mind. Is this the finale? We're done? Well, almost done. I didn't make the lock require three keys, because the weight was too much to bear alone. It was because having others with me, 
but forced me to keep up the Lord facade. That's, that's what I was thinking. I don't know if I ever voiced that. Oh yeah, I was right the whole <laughs> No, but really, I was thinking that he can't go in alone and, and, you know, do anything. I don't know when I first saw that. It was, it was probably just an episode or two ago, but I don't think I voiced it at least. It would have been yesterday. To prevent me from letting anything slip. Or maybe, maybe I was just waiting. Hoping someone would betray me, make me pay. Pathetic, I know. You can have the necklace. It belongs to you. Though I doubt Morgana will accept it. I hope you'll still attempt to give it to her yourself. Will you do that? Where did you get that anyway? From Maria. Thought you would have thrown it out by now. This game has a lot of dot dot dots. <laughs> and it always has... Instead of just three, which is like, you know, commonplace, it has like... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I assume she, she doesn't think very highly of me. Be honest with me. She was planning to, kill, planning to kill you. Ah. Maybe that would have been for the best. To her, nothing but a power hungry traitor. The necklace? I'll take it. Here you are. When he takes the necklace, Jacopo looks as though he's on the verge of tears. Whether from the pressure of not wanting to lose face, or simply because he's no longer able to, he doesn't actually shed any though. The other two just stand and watch him quietly. Neither of them saw the vision of his past, though they don't pry either. Our exchange was probably sufficient to give them an idea of what happened, even if they don't know the details. Clutching the necklace in one hand, Jacopo takes up the head of the per procession, procession, right, procession, to the observation tower. That doesn't sound right. While it lasts for but, a, but for a brief moment, I see an image of the young man he used to be in the, his slightly slouched shoulders. Oh, this is the house of Fata Morgana! I know this one. This might actually be the finale. Well, no, but it's still. At least two windings. Because then it would be. I'd get really OCD about it, if not, because the layout of it. They each insert and turn their individual keys. The lock disengaging and the door giving a deep groan as it swings open. No, this is everybody's crying. Never mind. <laughs> Beyond it, that spiral staircase extends high into the sky. Those are my f two favorite songs of uh, Bono Morgana. Uh, everybody's crying, which I think that's like a classic. Everybody likes that one. And uh, the the house of Bono Morgana. That's like the opening thing. This is called Deliverance. Uh, every time I climb these stairs, it's always been a solemn affair. Now is no different. I've succeeded though. We got them all here, ready to set her free before she's supposed to die. I've changed the past, but like. Isn't she just gonna die anyway, like last time? Giselle? Can you hear me, Giselle? I made it in time. Now Morgana doesn't have to die tomorrow. I did it. Giselle. With me. Come on. You guys here? Talking? Yeah, the door? There's someone else in there with her? There couldn't be. It's only Morgana. It's Giselle! Stay with me, please. Come on, you can't give up now. I'll be quiet. As if you have any idea what I'm going through. I'm? Of course I do. I'm... No. Standing before the door at the top of the stairs, a chill runs down my spine. Before I have time to consider what might, might have caused it, my body moves on its own. I shove my way past the other men and push open the door. I know. I'll come up with something pleasant. To take your mind off things. Is she talking to herself? I'll come up with a story. A story? How about this? A dove flies in through the window up above. A piece of parchment tied to it's like, I remember this! Story 1. It's a letter from the prince of a neighboring land. You read it, and you read a response. I do not. I don't respond. This one isn't capitalizing her eyes. After exchanging letters back and forth for some time, the prince comes to find you. I'm not going. I'm going to f fall for your stupid fantasies. 
Holding on to something, even a fantasy, is better than believing in nothing at all. I don't want you to give up hope. Baseless hope only breeds... only breeds despair. Not that you would know about... would know... would know, would know that. Besides, if anyone's going to come for me, I don't want it to be a prince. There's only... only one person I want to see. We're all stunned to silence of the scene unfolding beyond the door. Organa is having a conversation with herself. This does answer the question who the white haired girl is. Oh! I see! And where she came from. But I can't. This is just. No one should have to go through this. Her mind is split into two. Or Morgana. Looks like you have visitors. They're here to take to take my blood. Or they've got no no use for me anymore. Are here. Here to kill me. Oh don't be so negative. Look, there's someone new. Kill me. It's just set set me free already. I wonder if the white haired girl's appearance is based off Michelle. I don't know how that would work, uh, except for time shenanigans, but Organa. You you know what my my wish is. Kill me. A curse. Put a curse on them. Come on, Morgana. Look up at them. Your letters. They made it. I ain't never wrote. Never wrote any letters. He's got long hair as white as snow and eyes like rubies. He's beautiful. Like an angel descended from heaven. An angel. Morgana. I've come for you, Morgana. I've come to set you free. Would you please undo her shackles, Jacopo? As you say. an SCG. Morgana. Angel? Can you hear me, Morgana? At long last, I have the chance to hold you while you're still alive. I'm here to get you out of this tower. You have nothing to worry about anymore. You can go outside again, see the sun. You can go back to your old life. Angel. Morgana. Angel. No one's going to hurt you anymore, Morgana. And the three of them by the door, none of them have any malice for you. Angel. You're free. You can go free again. Angel. You can have a normal life. No one is going to take any more of your blood. Angel. Look, look, can you stop saying Angel? <laughs> Please, Morgana. Please stay with me. Don't you want to leave this place? I'm, I'm going to set you free. I'll take you back to your cottage by the lake. I'll get you medicine. I'll help you with anything you need. You want to go somewhere far away, I'll take you there. I'm begging you. I've waited so long for this moment. Morgana. I've been waiting so long for God to send, to send an angel. Are you, are you an angel? I, are you an angel sent to deliver me from this place? I'm, please, deliver me into my father's presence. I can't, I can't go back out there. I can't live in the Mordor realm any longer. I don't want to. It's only... One place I wish to go. Oh holy, oh, holy servant of the Lord. You are an angel, aren't you? Please don't make me choose angel or no angel. Morgana, please. Because I have no idea which one would be the right choice. Like, on one hand, like, you say no, and be like, I'm Michelle, I'm, you're gonna live. On the other hand, like, you say yes, and she get, gets happy, gets the morale boost to live. Please, deliver me from this place. No, oh, it's actually doing it? Oh, okay. Ooh. Yes, that's right. I am... For now, yes, I will be... I'm the Archangel Michael, sent to deliver your soul unto God the Father. Your angel. I've descended from heaven above. It's wonderful. Morgana. His father? Is he proud of me? Father, the Lord Almighty, is exceedingly proud of the great work you have done in his name. Thank you. It means so much to me to hear that. <sighs> I couldn't be happier to be able to return with you to see him. Morgana. Morgana! <sighs> ah! Morgana!
Her body goes limp in my arms. It's the last of her life slips away. There should have been more than enough time to spare, but I still failed to save her life. At the very least, I hope I was able to provide her some comfort in her final moments. I'm allowed to think that, aren't I? We were too late. But well, why? Wasn't she not supposed to die until... That's what you said, isn't it? That was how it was supposed to happen, right? So how come we still didn't make it? Why didn't you do anything? Why did you just let her wither away like this? Why? Answer me. I have no answer for you. I had no idea she deteriorated so badly. We should take her outside. Then get atone for your sins. But first, we need to take her body somewhere clean. Death does not mean you're free of pain. We need to ensure her soul can depart in peace. You won't see me objecting. We need to say now what you are going to say to her. You must let her know the truth. She's dead. What good will it do to reveal my feelings now? Are you really that dense? Of course it will do good. Her physical body may be dead, but her soul is still here, watching everything. Listening to every word you say. I don't believe in souls. Well, I'm begging you to change your mind. Let Morgana hear what you have to say. Don't let her soul seethe in hatred. Please. I'm begging you. Okay. Morgana. I... I'm not the lord you knew. The man who put you through that hell. I killed him. I'm the man who freed you from his grasp. I'm... The man who spent the next three years with you. We were poor and food was scarce, let alone good food. But those were happy times. Just about every day I'd come to your appointment on your face. I'd tell you to look at me. You'd reluctantly turn my way. I used to think a lot about the face you'd make when you finally gave in. Then there was Maria. I can only imagine how obnoxious you thought the two of us were when we were in the same room together. You're sitting off alone while me and Maria go at it, not making a peep, and you're always trying to sneak glances at you. There's so much I never managed to tell you. And I hate myself for being too weak to put any of it into words. I can apologize, but I doubt you'd forgive me. I don't want you to either. I just want you to know that this, is, this isn't how I wanted things to turn out. What I wanted more than anything was to show you the world. But instead, all I managed to show you was the inside of a cold, dark tower. Not the beautiful, unimaginably wide world outside these walls, but a tiny, filthy corner of it. I did this to you. I took everything from you, when I should have given you everything. However much you hate me, I deserve every last bit of it, and more. I was ready to pay with my life, that's what you wanted. I was ready to do absolutely anything. This wasn't how I wanted things to turn out. I waited too long to bring myself to take action. Morgana, the man there. You told me you said the three years you were with me and Maria were the brightest days of your life. Well, they were for me too. I... I loved you. That's everything. Did any of what he just said make it through to you, Morgana? I pray with all my heart that him opening up will have even the tiniest effect on how you feel. Morgana? I also want to apologize for everything I did to hurt you. But no, you have to go in order! You keep asking next! I feel terrible about it, I really do. Yeah, I know that's not enough to make up for what I've done. So I want to make amends, whatever it takes. If you want me to give you my life now, I will. If you want me to spend the rest of my days paying for my sins, I can do that too. I'm an irredeemable monster and a killer. I take pleasure in hurting people. You're right to be afraid of me. I am... I am genuinely sorry for what I did to you, though. I never wanted to see you dead. Sorry. I can't come up with, come up with anything better to say. I was kind of expecting something like that. Let's bring her outside. Would you carry her body, please? You should be the one to carry her. You're far better suited to the job. My right, arm, my right arm is in no condition to be picking anything up. I'll help you lift her then. She said it was my words she needed to hear more, most, but ultimately, it was you who saved her. And me, who made that necessary. She wanted to be delivered to God by the hands of an angel. So the angel here should carry her. I can't. It wouldn't be right. Please, would you do it for her? Very well. Jacopo puts the necklace around Morgana's neck and lifts her dead body off the ground and places her in my arms. He opens the door, heading for the four-man pr procession under the tower, as he had it. 
I walk at the back of the line. Each step they take down the spiral staircase is slow and ponderous, as if as if weighted down by the knowledge of their sins. They must make their way to the place they will make their atonement. I wasn't able to prevent Morgana's death, but I was able to uncover the truth. I accomplished something. The sum of everything I did those these three days should be enough to change your heart. It changed the course of their next lives. I should be able to avoid the tragedies I witnessed through each of their doors. Oh, this thing's called atonement. I don't notice when it changed. I didn't notice. When we step through this door and the people see Morgana's body, we'll be made to pay for our sins. Ultimately, I'm the one responsible, so the two of you, will, the two of you, are welcome to stay behind. I'm coming with you. A girl died because of the, because of the things I did. I can't just pretend it didn't have anything to do with me. No, I don't want to. I never had any intention of fleeing. You may have been the one running the operation, but I did just as many terrible things as you. Well then. Say, uh, Michelle? Yes? I figured this is probably my, my last chance to say it, so thank you for convincing me to hand over my key. For giving me the courage to open my eyes. You always had the courage within you, Mel. You simply needed a little help finding it. It wasn't my strength that allowed you to take action, but your own. <laughs> sure know how to make someone feel better about themselves. I'd like to be a little stronger next time around. There really is a next life. I'd like to be strong enough to face whatever comes my way. To not run away or try to ignore it. I have no doubt you will be. The trials you're made to face are great, and very few of them are your own making. Yours is a tragedy of circumstance, a feelings kept secret and good intentions gone wrong. If you can face the problem when it arises rather than look away, I'm certain you can find your way to a better future. You mean in my next life? I do. I'll trust you know but you know what you're talking about, then. Burn your advice in my soul. Don't look away. Please do. Glad to have met you. If there's a next life, I'd like it if we could be friends. Just so you know, I'll never convince me to go on walks around a lake or take naps out of the sun. What? Well, that makes you sound like a very gloomy, unpleasant person to be around. Just joking. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, you kept telling me you weren't an angel, but you actually are, aren't you? I promise you, I'm a regular man. You told Morgana you were an angel. I only... Angels and demons don't get along very well, so I'd rather not run into you in my next life. I appreciate what you did here, though. I'll do my best to be more human next time. Please do. I repeat to myself what you told me, that what I need most is your strength, as I make my departure from this world. Then maybe I won't forget it, even if I do lose my memories. Burden into my soul. I don't really like that. I think I'll follow the boy's lead there. That'd be best. I'll be praying that, even if you are capable of love, You'll be able to live a peaceful life with a good woman who loves you. That you'll be able to make her happy by doing so. I still think she'd be better off never knowing me. Whether you want her to or not, she's almost certainly going to meet you and fall in love with you. You know, now that I think about it, she's not as normal as I first thought. She's a peculiar woman. I can't say I disagree. Well, I guess I guess this is goodbye then. That it is. I know everyone else is doing it, but I've got nothing to say to you. I didn't expect you would. Ha! <laughs> Though I suppose, I do have something I'd like to say to you. What might that be? Be more open with yourself. If you had only put your feelings into words, things would have turned out differently, in both this life and your next. Coming from you, and it looks even more close off than me, that rubs me very much the wrong way. I really look that closed off. In more ways than one, yeah. That part of me is deeply ingrained. You telling me to open up won't magically and disentangle my personality and make it be. I don't think you're as twisted as you believe you are. I'll consider it this next life nonsense you're selling is true. Please do. Lord have mercy. One hell of a man certainly busted his way into my life. The last thing I expected was for an outsider to be the one to get us to open that door. Impressive work for one man. It was not only my doing. I had help from a number of people. 
and it was you, Giselle, who did the most in getting me here. I'm not as big a man as the other three of you make me out to be. Before this, I'd lost so much, felt utterly powerless. I was on the verge of abandoning all hope. But having the opportunity to meet all of you, to spend time with you and the people around you, it did a great deal to revitalize my spirit, despite the atrocities involved. So I thank you. I pray your next lives may turn out better. I suppose we should get going then. Off to pay for our crimes. To relieve your soul of some of its pain. And I suppose to make sure their next lives go a little better. Let's. He places a hand on the large door, then takes a step forward. The door lets out a heavy groan, and moonlight slips through the widening crack. It's all over now. I did it. I changed the past. Game better than that. Okay, oh, cool. cool. <laughs> I thought that might happen. Standing alone in a river of blood. Ooh! Do I keep going or call it there? Like, I'm gonna keep going today either way, but I think I call it there for the episode. Because we're not done yet. Apparently. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's going to be something. And we'll find out next time. This, I think this this specific one is from door two. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, uh, go back to main menus for next time. How do I go? How do you? How do you go to main menu? You're turning the title there. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Be back. We'll be back next time for what? Could be the finale. I'm not ready. I don't want it to be over. But, you know, it's gotta be. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.